Dr. Sage here. In this video, we're going to continue talking about the bacteria. And in particular, we're going to discuss the external structures of the bacteria. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe the structure and function of different types of bacterial external structures and explain how a flagellum works in the presence of an attractant. All right, in regards to the external structures the bacteria can have, we have different categories. We have appendages, which include the flagella, pili, fimbri, and nanowire. And then we have the surface coatings, which include the S layer and the glycocalyx, which is the slime layer or the capsule. All right, so the two major groups of appendages are the flagella and axial filaments, which provide motility. They allow the bacteria cell to move. And then the fimbri, pili, and nanowires, which provide attachment points or channels for the bacteria. In regards to the flagella, the flagella is made up of three distinct parts. The filament, the hook, and then the basal body. Now the flagella can be arranged on the bacteria in different ways. You can have polar arrangements, which is where the flagella are attached at one or both ends of the cell. Examples of polar arrangements are the minotritis, okay, which is where there's a single flagellum at one end of the cell. Amphitritis, which is where there's flagella at both poles, the two different ends of the cell. Or lophotritis, which is small bunches of the bacteria at an end of the cell. Then you can also have peritritis, which is where the flagella are dispersed randomly over the surface of the cell. Now, the bacteria are going to be moving. Why might they move? Well, they could move due to chemotaxis, which is movement in response to chemical signals. We have positive chemotaxis, which is movement of a cell in the direction of a favorable chemical stimulus. For example, if bacteria detect a food source like glucose, they might start swimming towards that food source, like you can see in this video here. Or they could have negative chemotaxis, which is movement of a cell away from a repellent or potentially harmful compound. In addition to chemotaxis, we can also have phototaxis, which is movement towards light. Now, when the bacteria are moving, the way they move is through runs and tumbles. During a run, there's a counterclockwise movement of the flagella. This allows the cell to swim in a smooth, linear direction towards the stimulus. Or you can have a tumble. This is where the flagellum reverses direction, causing the cell to stop and change course. Repellents often cause numerous tumbles. So an example, let's say that there's a bacteria that's going through a run. So the flagella are moving counterclockwise and is moving in a straight direction. And then they enter a tumble where the flagella start to move clockwise and the cell kind of tumbles, um, changing direction. Then they enter another run where again, the flagella are moving counterclockwise and they're moving in a particular direction. In this case, towards some chemical attractant, for example, a food source, glucose, the bacteria want to swim towards. Now we can also have periplasmic flagella. This involves an axial filament. This is two or more long coiled threads found in spirochetes. It's an internal flagellum enclosed between the cell wall and the cytoplasmic membrane. It imparts a twisting or flexing motion to the cell. Now, in addition to having external structures for motion, we can also have external appendages that are used for attachment or channel formation. Oftentimes, attachment can cause bacteria to be more pathogenic. Now, ways that you can have the attachment is through a pilus or pili. They provide adhesion, but not locomotion. Fimbria or fimbriae, provide adhesion but not locomotion, or sometimes flagella can be used for attachment in some species, even though we most often think about flagella being used for motion. Okay, so the fimbri are small bristle-like fibers sprouting off of the surface of certain species of bacteria. Composition varies, but most contain protein. They have the inherent tendency to stick to each other and to surfaces, and they may be responsible for the formation of biofilms. For example, E. coli uses fimbri to adhere to epithelial cells. We also have pili, which are long, rigid, tubular structures made of pilin protein. They're only found in gram-negative bacteria, and they're used during conjugation, which is a partial transfer of DNA from one cell to another. Production of pili is controlled genetically. We'll learn in a later video exactly how these pili are used and what they're used for in details. 
Now the other type of external structures are surface coatings. One type of surface coating is an S layer. That's where thousands of copies of a single protein are linked together and it provides protection from environmental conditions. It's only produced in hostile environments for the bacteria. The other type of surface coating is the glycocalyx, which is a repeating polysaccharide units that may or may not include proteins. Two different types, slime layers and capsules. Slime layers form loosely around the cell and it protects the cell from loss of water and nutrients. In contrast, the capsule is more tightly bound to the cell than a slime layer and it's denser and thicker than the slime layer. Capsules are formed by many pathogenic bacteria and it protects the bacteria against phagocytic white blood cells. They're often involved in forming biofilms. For example, plaque on teeth protect the bacteria and they infect long-term indwelling artificial devices inside humans. Here's an example of a biofilm. So this bacteria, Staphylococcus aureus, okay, is growing on an implanted medical device inside a human. Now to help it grow on that implanted medical device, it creates this biofilm, which is this sticky-like substance you see, that helps the bacteria to adhere to the surface it is part of. Okay, so this was your brief overview of the external features of bacteria cells. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.